Hey everyone, Correct Jeans here for Lockpickers United, and I'm going to be doing a breakdown video on the Asset Twin Pro. Sorry, hang on. Hey everyone, Correct Jeans here, and I'm going to be doing a breakdown video on the Asset Twin. Hey everyone, Correct Jeans here with Lockpickers United, and I'm going to be doing a breakdown video on the Asset Twin. God. Hey everyone, Correct Jeans here with Lockpickers United, and I'm going to be doing a breakdown video on this Asa Twin Pro here. And silver double euros. Hey everyone, Correct Jeans here, doing a breakdown video for Lockpickers United on the Asa Twin Pro system. All right, here we are with the lock apart. As you can see, we have a six pin mechanism in addition to five finger pins, each with false gates on them. Now, just going over real quick how the sidebar mechanism works. If you're familiar with sidebar locks, then this mechanism is nothing particularly new to you. There is a groove inside of the uh, lock body itself in which the sidebar sits. In order for the lock to turn, the sidebar needs to be able to move out of this groove and turn in the rest of the cylinder, turn with the rest of the cylinder. Now, of course, the interior diameter of this part of the lock is the same as the diameter of the plug. So in order for the lock to turn, effectively, you need this sidebar to be flush with the, re with the plug of the lock. Now, in order for that to happen, these cuts on the sidebar that are coded to the key need to fit into the true gates on these finger pins. And so you can see that on each of these finger pins, each of these finger pins are two true gates, sorry, one true gate and two false gates on either side of it. And so these false gates are an anti-picking measure and so what will happen is when you try to pick it, your tension on the lock will push on the outside of the sidebar inside that groove. The sidebar will try to force itself into the lock. And if you're in a false gate, then of course it will not be able to recede enough to allow the lock to open. So it will just sort of sit at the surface here and not focus on my camera. So we'll sort of sit at the surface here. It'll get caught in that gate and nothing's really gonna move. It's hard to get them to align outside the lock. But as soon as you get to that true gate, it will recede far enough for the lock to be able to open. And far enough in this case is it will sit flush with the finger pin like so. So this would be an open position. We are in a true gate there. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, all of these finger pins are the same. There is a true gate in the middle with the two false gates on either side. This one is upside down, so it is not quite the same. Now, a last note about these finger pins. These finger pins, unlike other locks in the asset family, have this little wedge right in the center. So compared to things like the Asset Twin V10, which in which the, uh, the little element here is actually turned 90 degrees sideways to how this looks, or compared to things like the Asset Twin Maximum in which this wedge is pushed either forward or backwards in order to do master keying. And the Asset Twin Pro, it is simply triangular in the middle and it matches with these similar triangular cuts in the sidebar. This is in contrast to the flatter cuts that you get on the sidebar of say, the original Asset Twin 6000 type of locks. Now moving on to the top pins here. These are the um, ASA barrel spools. 
And they're a little bit different from what some of you have seen if you've seen Asabera's wheels before. Um, and this is not standard for the Twin Pro. This is just for this particular format. So normally what you would see in a barrel spool is a barrel element here on the bottom, but also an identical one on the top. This one does not have this one on the top because this is designed for the low profile format. And you can see that it's actually hollow in here. The other difference between this format and other acid twin locks is that these springs are significantly thinner than you would get in a standard acid twin. The reason is because this spring is designed to compress itself completely into this hole in the top of the driver pin. And the reason for that is because if you look at this cylinder, the stack stops here, whereas on a normal Euro, Euro cylinder, the stack is going to stop all the way up here. Um, the reason for this is because this is where the bar and the spacers go for the modular part of this Euro lock. So each of these stacks is very specifically designed to be exactly the same height. And it's harder to see with the ones that have master pins because I don't want to rotate those up. But I will put these together. You can see that they are all very specifically the exact same height. And in fact, there are as many different sizes of driver pins for this format of lock as there are key pins in order to account for that. And so the way it is designed is each of these stacks will reach exactly, whoa, each of these stacks will reach exactly this level at the top of their motion um, when they are lifted by the maximum lift of the key itself. So lastly, there is the operation of the actual barrel spools. Why are they shaped like this? And why do so many people fear them? Uh, why do people say, oh no, acid barrel spools, what do I do? Um, well, the reason is because these are designed to interface with the counter milling inside of, inside of acid locks. So you can see this little distance here where it goes from the outer diameter to the little thinner diameter before the tip. And Inside of this lock are two levels of serrations or um, counter milling. So at exactly this level right here, you can feel me catching on something. And that is exactly where the diameter constricts. And that is where the first serration is. Then there is a second serration here and then it gets freed. So what happens is as you pick this, this spool will get caught inside of this counter milling and it will feel a lot like a set pin. It's not going to give you counter rotation. The counter milling is too well designed for that. So you need to be able to feel the difference between a binding pin and a set pin without the counter rotation. And this means that you're going to be doing a little bit of the jiggle test. Um, either that or you could try to do it by sound. Um, Personally, I think the sound of picking out of acid counter milling is great, but some people think it sounds like they're snapping their pick. That's just personal preference, you know? So that's going to be what's going on in there. You have these little serrations. Overall, the interesting finger pin design coupled with the infamous acid barrel spools makes this lock incredibly difficult. It's very, very possible in, in uh, many cases to end up with uh, what's called the ping pong problem when trying to pick the sidebar in this lock, in which the action of moving out of a false gate causes another pin to drop down. And then the action of lifting this one out of a false gate causes another pin to drop down. And you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and lock never opens. And that is a uh, that is a thing that tends to happen in locks that have very good tolerances. And this lock indeed does have very good tolerances. Overall, it is a very difficult lock to pick. And um, look forward to the video that we're going to put out later this week, specifically on uh, Saturday, where our very own Diggs is going to pick one of these and then get it on video. So that's all for now. I hope that I've adequately explained the Essa Twin Pro and its mechanisms, and uh, have a good one.